Okay, let's get started. Hello everyone. I heartily welcome you all to this session on RPA. Sorry for the inconvenience caused because uh, some of the people are facing some issues and difficulties while joining the session. Sorry for that. You guys are waiting for it. Okay, let's get started. Before moving on to the next and the foremost topic, let me give a brief introduction of our company. We, we provide an end to end training in the fields like education tech solutions in robotics, automations, and whereas we, we do provide training and workshop on the latest technologies. Whereas when you talk about this education technology solutions, we offer virtual reality based education solution for K 12 education and industrial training. Because this is the this market is trending in this technology itself. And when you talk about the robotics, we will design robot training kits for students plus lab setup for the colleges and for the industries. And when you talk about this factory automation, we designed factory automation training kits and lab setup for colleges and training institutions. We offer complete end to end training workshop internship on latest edge cutting technology such as factory automation, robotic process automation, VLSI, DevOps, GitHub, cloud computing, data scientist. When you talk about this uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, IoT and so on. We provide if you choose your own domain, then we are here to help you. Let me move forward. Before moving on, let me introduce myself. This is Kantesh. This is an RPA certified UI developer and also a certified as data analyst where I provide a complete end training on this uh, RPA platform as well as if you are interested in data analytics, we do provide that things. I have uh, I have done several projects with top MNC by using this platform. I was actually responsible for complete end to end design of the process without any delusions. I have got a good amount of experience in the platforms. My idea is to share some of those with you guys as we move on. Okay, before moving on uh, and understanding what is RPA thing and all, let's understand the revolutionary how the industry has came and how it is now. Actually, we are in the fourth industrial revolution where the first, uh, first industrial revolution was all about like connecting the devices and dealing with the big data in an organization and doing some of the stuffs. And the second industrial revolution was all about like um, gig economy and changing demographics and dealing with the big data and doing some analysis to your data and so on. And the third industrial revolution was all about like business process or optimization where almost all of the uh, companies will have some process to be followed during that uh, during that time they were facing some issues like uh, they were uh, they might see some performance issue in the process the third industrial revolution was all about like optimizing their business process by introducing new softwares into their uh, companies for example in the finance when you talk about in the in the field of finance they have introduced this tally for easy of doing the work and we have crm tools like a zoho something you have heard about it we have something kind which was introduced in the third industrial revolution and now we are in the fourth industrial revolution where it all talks about this ai and the robotics where this robots Will, will not have any knowledge of any one of the process. First, what we do as a humans, we do provide some uh, additional knowledge to the robots to perform some specific tasks to our needs. Like we have some other other things. Let me uh, once we move on to the course, let me showcase you what I was talking about. Like before we uh, since we understand we understood the like what we are in and what's the revolution of this industry is right now. Since we have talked about this AI and RPA, let me give you a background of the things. When you heard about the uh, word called robotic process automation, the word RPA can be elaborated as such. The word robotic means which is an entity has the capability to mimic the human action. 
whereas the process is a sequence of steps that lead to a meaningful activity or task. And finally, you have something called automation. That automation is a task happen automatically without any human intervention. When I summarize it all of it at once, I can get a proper definition stating that RPA is a technology that allows anyone today to configure a robot to emulate and integrate the action of human with digital system. I think you guys are a um, bit confused like what are this and uh, you might be finding some difficulties. Once I showcase you the demo thing and how it's working in the background, you will, you will get a fair knowledge on this. Actually, this RPA, it is, it is nothing uh, all over like any, you, you should not think as a hardware robot. Means it, it walks in your office and doing some of the job. It is not such a way. This robotic process automation, it's all about like uh, it, it performs an automatic task in an user interface. For example, in my machine, in my laptop, if I want to do some steps on my laptop, if I ask my robot to perform the same action, my, in my screen, you can see automatically the function is happening automatically without any things is intervention by the human. And the best thing of the RPA is it makes zero error. It never sleeps. Let me give you, and now uh, before understanding the concepts, let me give you some understanding of this RPA. This RPA, as I said, it is not an hardware, it is a software. So it will be inside your machine. So if you ask your robot to do some steps, it will perform that and it gives you. So that is, that is one kind of automation. Like if uh, you might be having some doubts, like what and all the things it happens, what and all the operation it performs. For example, um, let me take in the finance industry, in the, I'm talking about the business perspective, they might be purchasing some of the orders from different customers or from different vendors to do some automation things or anything means some products for their manufacturing unit. Let's take an uh, example as a manufacturer unit itself. They might be taking some raw materials such as steel and uh, some of the other materials like um, um, like uh, so many stuffs. They might be procuring some chemicals to do some of the things and all. Like if they do that, they might be getting some invoice and, uh, and they have to write some PO things and all. Like to do this kind of stuff, many people in the market, or they are hiring one particular, only one dedicated resource, human resource for this, for doing the operations. What the resource is doing, he will see the invoice, what is getting from the vendors. And he will see the purchase order, what, are, what we are rising. He will compare the both the things, if it is correct, and uh, he will enter the same thing in our CRM. If not, he rejects it and he, he asks for an approval. Actually, it is of a small task. It is not, um, uh, it doesn't require any, um, any advanced knowledge for this. In this case of scenarios, we use, we bring in this robot process technology. I, th uh, this is the, just an example of it. Just uh, let's, uh, next let's uh, relate the same thing in uh, real life scenarios. So in this kind of scenarios, RPA plays a prominent role. RPA itself will take the two documents which is in a soft copy, not a hard copy, because it is not a hardware robot. It takes two documents uh, in a soft copy manner. It reads the invoices and it reads the POs and it checks whether the both the data are same. If it is same, then it, it performs the next action and also it's stored in some, some place. So this is, this is what some example of this RPA. When you talk about the best thing of this RPA is, it makes zero error. As a human in our business, if I if I am involved with some of the tasks like invoice thing, we humans usually do mistakes. So mistakes can happen by the human. Whereas if you implement this RPA in the business process, then it makes it makes zero error. And also it will be available like 24 bar 7. And also another advantage is it never sleeps at all. If you want the process should be run. In the midnight three o'clock, it does the job. And the hard thing to say is 
it costs lot less than employee means for that operation if you hire one employee for that doing that things it costs you around uh, 40k or 50k uh, whereas you use this rpa in the place of him it costs very less than the employee what you are charging this thing it is hard to say but is the real fact when you see the benefits of this rpa it eliminates the repetitive task it provides scalability and flexibility with any kind of process it provide return of investment within no time and so on there are many but many benefits of this rpa and next since till now i just spoke with you guys of all about like what is rpa and uh, what are the things what are the benefits of rpa thing like this rpa is a platform like um think it is like something like a classroom in the classroom we have so many students right similarly think in a such a way this rpa is like a classroom and to to do that stuffs like to do this automation stuffs we have different products to do that like we have ui path automation anywhere pega system blue prism work fusion so many we have so many rpa products in the market but people who want to automate some of the task in their business process they might get in a dilemma that okay i have so many products in the market i don't know which has to choose in that case of scenario there are many global advisory firms means their job is to educate the customers by by providing some useful informations similar to that we have one uh, global advisory firm which is of a forester wave you can see on the screen forester wave this this global advisory what they will do they they just they don't go to each of the customer and educate like please take this ui path or automation anywhere or blue prism or anything what they do is for one complete year they analyze the features functionality and the performance and the usability and the integrability everything they going to perform and also they take a feedbacks from the customer who have already been using it they take all of the inputs and they understand the market how it is and uh, they think about the cost perspective also according to that they put up this products in their own graph for example this forest wave has their own graph it represent in a such a way where it has a leader quadrant stronger performer contender and the challenges in this you can see the in the leader quadrant these are the three products leading the market in rpa platform like to do some automation stuff by making use of this rpa we have three products which are which is in the leader we have many products but in the when you when you take this graph into in consideration and when you look into the leader quadrant you have three things ui path automation anywhere and the blue prism okay now you got some understanding about what is rpa and what are the tools of rpa like uh, and also we have been like um um uh, we have uh, cut it down into an only three products now one is ui path automation anywhere and the blue prism based on the graph provided by global advisory firm now in this three product which one to choose you don't know let me give you and strong points on that when you see the market trend how the this rpa has been using all over the market in and all over the year when you see at the first uh, the blue thing represent blue prism and the red thing represent automation anywhere and the yellow thing represent ui path at first the blue prism was leading the business like leading the market whereas ui path and also automation anywhere were giving tough competition when you go on with an year you can see the market trend how many people are using this platform and uh, how much they have been adopting this in their environment you can see the ui path which was started very less than the compared to other two but now it is the top leading one why because because of its user interface and this integration capability and the uh, because of its performance things let me showcase you that as well 
Now you got some understanding of based on three products, which one to choose, like UA path. UA path, you have seen the market trend, how the people are using based on their uh, things and all. Now let me give you some strong points on this UA path. We have some, uh, we have another global advisor, Tim, which is of a Gartner PA Insights, where in that around 321 people have reviewed this product with a 4.5 rating because of its user interface and this functionality. And we have another global advisor frame called g 2 crowd where in that people have reviewed around 236 with 4.6 rating. And in the IT central station, they talk all over it like in the depths, not in a, in a rating spanner. In that they have scored around 30 in depths of rating. You might be wondering why only this much amount of uh, users have reviewed this product. Let me give, uh, let me explain you that. This global advisor film will not just uh, ask a random question to a random users um, and get the inputs and such as the best platform in the market. What they do is they design their question in a such a way that only the used user the platform used user can only answer that one. They take and proof of the each one of the products what they are using. Like each one of the review is a qualified one. So you can see we have a qualified review of 321, 236 and 30. So now understanding of all of these things. Now we got in a proper understanding that your path is the leading the market and People are using more of this UA path, and this is the best platform for the automation. Automation. Let me talk about that much more. And also, this slide will all all speaks about like an strong points on this UA path as well. You can see this is an UA path and automation anywhere and the blue prism. These are the three products, right? What we have uh, uh, finalized it as the leader quadrants leading the market in that when you see each one of the functionality and the features and this graph is not presented by our own even this is presented by a global advisory firm which is of a forester research you can see on the source thing and this you can see the board development and the code ui desktop functionality you can see the rating of 4.5 when you compare to other things other two Whereas system management and reporting, you can see the higher rating compared to other two. Architecture, governance, security, and overall current offering, you can see it is the leading compared to all of the things. And, and also you can see something called RPA analytics. It is scoring very less compared to this automation anywhere. Why? Because this graph was, was generated in the last year in the June month. At the end of the June, uh, it was being published as. During that time, it doesn't have any integration capability to an uh, analytical platform, which is often like uh, you have heard about this Power BI, um, Click, Tableau things and all. They are they are the ones who analyze their data in the business. So during that time, this UA part doesn't have any integration capability for this kind of platforms which are available in the business. So that's the reason it was scoring very less. But now in this month, we can expect a better readings, better rating on each of the features because now it has been an um, like integration. It has all and all of the products integration capabilities and also the ready made activities. OK. This is what all about the RPA and the products in RPA and also we saw which was the best. Now let's understand what is this UI path. This, uh, if I want to talk about this UI path, let me, before that, let me give you a brief introduction on this UI path and how it is functionality. UI path is founded by a Romanian entrepreneur, Daniel Danis and Mauritius these are the two people who have founded this UI path company in 2005. It is a global company that develops a platform for RPA to transform your manual repetitive task 
to an automated process. And when you see the wow, what and all the paths this UI path is having, you can see as UI path studio, UI path orchestrator, UI path robots. Let me give you a brief understanding on each of the modules. This UI path studio, it is a place where you design your workflows, which are, for example, I said now, the same two invoices it has to compare and scrape the data and do the stuffs. So this is the place where you define the process for the automation, UI path studio. It has n number of activity which are easily integrated with many of the platform like Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud, Adobe, Excel, and so on. Most of the products I have not mentioned over here, but it can have the capability also. And when you talk about this UiPath orchestrator, it is nothing but uh, nothing but as a server where it is having all the robots and also the processes which are built in UiPath Studio. Think as an orchestrator as a server where it is having the process which was built in UiPath Studio. It is published to server. That workflow is published on orchestrator, and also this orchestrator will be having all kind of robots, which I'll be explaining in the next slide. What are robots? So this orchestrator work is is to like in an organization we have around a ten thousand soft machine or laptops in our in our company. In that, my robot has to run on eight hundred and thirty sixth machine. It has to run one specific process which are built in UI path studio. In that case of scenario, if you are, you, you can trigger your robot to go to that system and perform the operation and come back. So this is the orchestrator thing. This is how it functions. And as I said, robots, UI path robots. This is the robots who executes the automation with a perfect accuracy and, and data center or the cloud. Like you can see a three kinds of robots. One is attended, second one is unattended, third one is an hybrid. The hybrid thing is not a type, but people are using in such a fashion as well. Let me give you an understanding of this attended robot. Like, let me take one example for attended robot. In a company, every month they will be issuing some salary or a payroll to the employee. Who is working over there? On Jan month, uh, like every every month at first, they'll be issuing these things. During that time, it's of a manual process. Like uh, this employee has to be they are credited with this kind of amount. So similarly, we have n number of employees and n number of accounts and n number of salary amount. In that case, it is a manual task. Now, if we try to automate these things, what my robot going to do is? It does all the functions and all the functionality like these are the employees and these are the numbers they, it has to be credited in their account. Once it does everything, finally it asks for an approval from the human like whether the script means the perform the data which is going to be credited in an employee account, whether it is a correct amount or a mismatch account. To, uh, to Differentiate between that it, uh, to, to have some approval kind of stuffs. In that case, we need attended robot. Attended robots, it does all the operations, but it, it needs some human intervention for an, any kind of approval things. In that case, we use attended robots. Whereas if I say the word unattended robots, you might be having the knowledge of it. What it's going to do? It doesn't ask any human intervention. It just go to the one particular system. It perform all the tasks and come back. That's it. And when you talk about this hybrid RPA, this hybrid RPA, it's all about the combination of attended as well as unattended robots in a one big business process. In that, the people will configure it as a hybrid RPA one. And also when you talk about this adoption extent, how this UI path has been adopted in different kinds of segments. When you talk about the banking, insurance, healthcare, manufacturing unit, energy utilities, and so on. And also you can see the things, what it can be automated, like card activation, 
in the banking sector, fraud claim discovery, claim processing in insurance, report automation in the healthcare, bills of material generation in the manufacturing, service order management and quality reporting in high tech and telecom, account setup, meter reading valid validation in the energy and utilities. Similarly, we have n number of processes that do in n number of sectors in each of the domains. That complete circle indicates there is a high need of RPA to be implemented. When you see the semicircle, it is that you have a minimum, medium level of uh, like adoption of this RPA. When you see the blank, uh, like a uh, blank circle, where it all indicates of there is there is no like a low risk of adoption of RPA thing. It just I just wanted to give give a background of it. So I just included this slide as well. Yes, when you talk about the benefits of RPA, where it follows the same benefits of uh, the RPA thing because it was built on RPA platform. It has to come with an all the benefits which RPA is offering. With addition to that, it has uh, it does more accurately and also the productivity rate you can expect much higher than ever and the reliability bots can work as i said 24 by 7 effectively and as i said it is a cost cutting technology it is one of the thing as i said uh, you have seen the rpa analytics rating as 3.5 or anything right Yes, during that time, there was not much uh, integration capability. Similar to that, in the different kinds of domains, we have different kinds of integration capability where you can see in the artificial intelligence or machine learning, you have data robots, element AI, SkyMine, and so on. And in the miscellaneous, in the security, Google Vault, Cyber R technology. These are, the, these are the tools, these are the technology which people are already been using in their companies. To do some of the auto, uh, like uh, to do some of the operations in that process. This UiPath, it doesn't do that stuff. It makes that application to run automatically. Each of the uh, each of the softwares, what you are seeing in the in the in this slide is, it requires some human intervention to perform or to run some query on that platform. Whereas this RP technology. What it eliminates? It eliminates the human. It replaces with an automation. And after understanding these steps, you might be uh, till now we have talked about uh, we have talked about this automation and the process thing and so on and so forth. But we will get in a dilemma that what uh, what are the kind of process should I need to automate it? Like every auto uh, every process. Can I automate it automatically so that there is no requirement of human at all? No, there are some rules and dedications to be done before qualifying it for an RPA thing. Like if any process you might take, if it follows this workflows, then only we can say that it is an best fit for an RPA. Let me explain you the steps. Think you have some process to be automated in your business. You have to check whether it is a highly manual repetitive process. Means human are performing daily with the same task, same boring task, daily with the same time from 9.30 to 6.30. You have to check whether it is a manual or repetitive task. If it is a manual, then you have to go, go move to the next stage. If it is not, you have to apply some process improvement initiatives for that process before being automated. Next, let's think it is of a manual repetitive process. Then we have to check whether it is a rule based process. It means, does it involve much kind of rules? If this happens, this should not happen. If this happens, this should not happen. Some kind of that stuff. If it is uh, involving that kind of rules, if it is yes, then move on to the next stage. As I said, this RPA is of a software, not an hardware. Like, you have to check whether it is a readable electronic input types. Electronic input types. If it is S, then you have to move on. 
then you have to check for the standard inputs whether the inputs which you are feeding in for the robot to perform you have to check whether it is a standard one if it is a standard one then you have to check for a low exception rate this exception rate is the one like um let uh, let me take one example this some uh, while performing some steps you might wantedly want to get some error or may not in that case if you have more exception exception means i'm talking about an error kind think in a such a way for now time being this exception treated as an error if it is has less exception rate then you have to check for processing method can be changed if processing method can be changed you have to check in the for that process if you if you are capable of uh, changing the processing method which are adopted from past decades in your business if you can change then implement any self service platform other than rpa thing because the whole method like uh, the the invoice method as i given an example right that um, the uh, human is reading the both the invoices and calculating and feeding it this is one kind of process if if this method the whole method the crm application what they are using from past decade if you have the capability to change it then implement some other self service platforms rather than rpa if the process cannot be changed but but it has to be automated then you have to check for next thing whether it is having high process volumes means what did i mean was is high process volume means um for example let me take as uh, the same invoice in a month if you are performing only 5 to 6 invoices in that case there is not much necessary for rpa implementation if there are around 10000 or 20000 kinds of invoices which are flowing into your business in that case because the volume is high the person takes much time to perform that one in that case it is of a high volume you have to check whether it is in high volume or not if it is a high volume then you have to check whether when minor automation improve the process like doing some of the scripting stuff or anything if you can automate it and uh, do the needful job then uh, investigate some of the tactical solution rather than rpa one if some uh, will uh, minor application doesn't solve your need then you have to check whether deep system changes is required to implement this rpa uh, you have to check whether the complete system means uh, you might be using like uh, n number of machines in that you have to change all of the machines like it uh, it has to be configured with different one if it is s the 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 system should should be changed then you have to investigate an option for system integration if it is there is doesn't require any system deep system changes then only i can say it has an best suited for rpa thing now if it is follows all of this process then only we can say this process as an um process which is suited for rpa based on this i have one small question for you guys i have formulated three processes one is process a process b and the process c here i have initiated all of the things what it has to be followed and you can see that um, semi circle indicates only the 50% of the rule based processes or 75% of the manual task such a way treat in a such a way and give me the best process which are to be automated first like i want which process should be automated first for example the process c is the first one just uh, then say me for c b a which process should be automated first like in such a way if possible you can post it in the chat as well i will just look into it and let me correct you let me give you some time just analyze the stuffs and just put it in the chat section which process should be automated it first
Okay, some people are asking for some explanation again. Let me switch back to the previous slide. See, if any kind of process which are need to be automated in business processes, I'm talking about in the company perspective, they might be having different kinds of process for doing the some stuffs. In that case, not all of the process can be automated. Only the specified and qualified process can automate it. If this whole process passes through this flow, then only I can say it has an best suited for RPA. Similarly, what in the anti check, whether it is in a highly manual repetitive task. First, usually the main uh, goal of this RPA is that itself. If you have manual and repetitive task, then it, it has to be fitted for RPE. Then you have to check for rule-based process. You have to check whether you have many rules to be performed that process. And you have to check whether it is a readable electronic input. And next, you have to check for standard inputs, low exception rate. And you have to check whether the processing method can be changed. If it is S, try to implement any other solution rather than RPE. And you have to check for high volume processes. If it is having a high volume process, then only it can be automated. If not, we have to uh, implement or investigate some tactical other solutions. And finally, you have to check whether deep system changes is required. If it is S, then try to investigate the system, other system integration rather than using this RP. If it is now, then only it is best suited for RPA thing. Let me bring this slide as well to that thing. I think you guys might be seeing it. So these are the three kinds of process what I have. In this three kind of process, I want you guys to help me with which kind of process should be automated it first. Automated it first. For example, if you say the process C should be automated, it, just give me a number stating that C, B, A, because C is the process which has to be automated first. B is the process it has to be automated in second. A is the process should be automated as third. So something that uh, combination of these characters I need. Just post it in the chat. Let me look into it. Any answers, guys, for me? Okay, as I saw in the chat, I can see some people have answered with the process A process B and the process C. Let me look at the answer ones. Yes, the process A is the best fit for automation followed by process B. Why? The process C should be subjected to lean sigma, six sigma transformation approach before considering for automating it. So when you see the criteria, it has highly manual repetitive work. Rule based process, it has 50%. Electronic input, standard inputs, low exception rate, high volume, system changes. 
when you compare to these three things this is the best one for automation and this is the second one followed by processing this was all about that now let me try to showcase you and how the extent this uipath has been using in the industries you might be knowing this ge which is open company where they have been using this unattended robots which is of 162 robots deployed in their one branch by doing that they have increased the productivity with 150 million plus of productivity it has been increased just look at the number 150 million plus productivity many people will try hard to get to reach only the five percent of this productivity but whereas ge by using this rpa they have attended such a such a huge number of productivity and also you might be heard of this kpmg it is of the uh, one of the top mncs where they have uh, they have uh, automated out 45 percent of the efforts have been automated it by doing that they have been saved around 54 thousands of man hours annually just look at the number 54 thousands of man hours how the big number is so this is what they uh, people can achieve by using this rpa platform and one uh, one of the another top mnc which is of unilever where they have automated of around 85 percent of their efforts have been automated it and also 160k of man has has been freed for high value work and within 10 months they have gained the return on investment roi you can see that one within 10 months they have regained the cost what they have implemented on this ui path so this is what all about this ui path and the rpa thing now let me take you th to the flow and how the automation can be built on the studio let me jump into my ui path studio you can see that Okay, it is taking some time to load. Okay, I think you guys are seeing my screen. If, if no, please help me whether you are able to see or not. You can post it in the chat. Let me look into it. Okay, this is the start screen. This is the start of this UA Path Studio. Where you can start your process uh, from this page. You can find different kinds of tools which are available on this Studio Start page. You can find something called process, library, test automation, and also you have many templates which are pre-built. Let's not worry much of it. Let me give you some understanding of such. In the, in the Teams tab, you can see something called Git, EFS, SVN. These are open source repositories where you can store your projects and work as a team while building the automation work. You can easily integrate with GitHub, EFS or SVN. Let's not worry much on that. And when you talk about the tool section, you can see some of the extinction which are already inbuilt with this. See, if you want to automate some stuff on the web browser, then according to your web browser, you have to choose accordingly your extinctions. For example, if you are using a Chrome to automate some stuff, you have to install Chrome extinction, Firefox, Edge, so on. Let me show you that one. When I open this, you can see something called UI Web Automation. This is the extinction which has been added. So if if this thing is available over here, then I can easily identify the stuff. Let me show you that one as well. Let me minimize this. And you have some uh, some of the other settings where you can set the theme, 
to light or dark mode or languages or some of the other settings i encourage you guys to go and explore it and in the start screen let me come back to the process let me start building one small process and understand you what this ui path is doing i'm just creating one process called demo process let me give a description as demo let me hit create when i hit create it automatically it automatically downloads all of the dependencies which are needed for the automation to be performed which which provides a basic level of the dependencies before starting the flow if you want we can add some more things okay this is the start screen where you can see you have how you have something called design panel and you have something called debug panel and you have something called activities which i have mentioned earlier like you have different kinds of activity for interacting with applications you have different kinds of activities and you have much more to do that while while running the flow let me give you an understanding of such before starting our process let's understand what kind of process we are automating it okay first let's try to automate one simple task for example think i am uh, i am a blogger and i do i do some marketing stuffs and i do some uh, i do some blogging stuffs by blogging some of the pages in uh, in uh, in websites and so on which actually i am not but i for this i am taking an example think i am a blogger and also i do some marketing stuffs in my twitter account and in facebook and linkedin and so on but by my daily usually habit is in the morning when i wake up i usually go to my twitter account and i just see how many followings and the followers are there in my to my account for example in the previous day i might have run some of the different kinds of campaigns or marketing activities because of that my followings or followers might be increased so to do that i just usually in the morning i just go to my twitter account i just get the followings and the followers details from my account and i will just turn it off but another drawback of this what i usually do is in the morning I, in my bed itself i will open my twitter account when i start scrolling the things when i see the followings and followers i will not stop then and there i will go to the main page i will try to see the new feeds what people are posting in the social media there because of this my time has been consumed lot on this social media so i want my robot has to do because the only small information what i need from my account is only the followings and followers my robot has to give me that that information so there is no necessary for me for going back to my twitter account and seeing this stuff so that i can save my time so this is kind of process now let's try to automate it before that let me showcase you how as a human i do every day i will go to my twitter account once i go there i will hit login and i will enter my credentials and i will hit login once it is logged in to my account i will just go to my profile on the tab you can see there i see only this two information i have uh, i just see how many following and how many followers i have after that uh, my daily routine i will go to the, my home page and i will keep on scrolling the things scrolling uh, scrolling all the tweets to avoid that i want to process i want to automate these things and i want my robot to perform this action now let me ask my robot the same step to be done let me go back to my studio and it asked something called drop activity here 
here you have something called a sequence activity let me drag and drop where it all it it provide one kind of box like one after the other one after the other that each one of the activity should be performed in such a way let me not give you a brief idea of that let me just have a glimpse of the things and what i'm doing why this ui path is the best for user interface just look into it see as a human what i do i will open my browser right similarly i have one activity open browser you can see the same daily english language what we use and what we speak with our colleagues the same activity has been renamed open browser what it has to open it is asking for some link let me give this link directly. Let me copy this link and let me put it over here. Yes. Now my robot gonna open the browser. After that, what it has to do? Sometimes what will be the case of my robot opens in such a fashion where the automation cannot be visible properly. In that case, I have to maximize my window. Similarly, I have something called activity called maximize window. Just drag and drop. It will maximize my screen. Next, once it is on this page, what it has to do? It has to click on the login, right? Let me ask the same thing to do by my robot. It has to click. Let me drag that activity on the canvas. It has indicate an element. Now I need to showcase my robot where it has to see if this UI extension were not there. I was not able to indicate each one of the elements on this browser. Since I have that extension added, I can identify the things. My robot has to click on this login button. Okay, once it is clicked, then what it should do? As a human, I just want to see once it is clicked, this page appears. I have to type in my username and the password. Like what? What did I say? Type in my username and password. Type. Type activity. See, I have the same activity. Type. Type in my username and the password. Where it has to type? It has to type on this section, username. Okay. Since I asked my robot to type into that section, but there will be some confidentiality issues. Like you might be building the flow and you might be um, embedding your credentials. For example, my email ID and the password. I might be embedded in this in this workflow. If I do that, when some people will try to open this process and try to get my credentials, and they might misuse it. To avoid that one, we have something called orchestrator what the it is one of the component what you just saw in this place what we do is we store this kind of sensitive data on this on this on this platform let me log into that one yeah, just give me a minute Please bear with me guys, just a minute. Okay, you can, were you able to see my screen, right? So this is the orchestrator. This is the one of the component in the, as I said, server, right? This is one of the component, which is of your path orchestrator. This is the place where all of your robots, see robots. How many? I have two robots. One is disconnected. One is connected to my machine, to this machine. My robot 
and also I can do so many stuffs on this platform. But as I was speaking of the sensitive data, where I can store that kind of sensitive data on this platform, which is called assets in your path orchestrator. See, I have stored my Twitter credentials over here. You might be having some question that if some people who have access to your orchestrator can log in and steal your credentials. Let me show you that one as well. Let me open this credentials and you can see the password is nothing. You cannot see the password which is over here, but still the password is there where it has been encrypted with AES 256 bits of encryption has been done for my password. Let me try to create one small password as well. Let me say as Twitter account Fred and it's of a type credentials. It asks for username and password. Let me give the username. And it asks for the password as well. Now let me type in my password. See, you can you if you want you can view on this. After you save, you cannot view this password. I have given the username and the password. Let me hit create. You can see Twitter account cred has been created. Let me try to edit the same thing. See, the password section is empty. It is not visible, but the password is still there. So this is the use of storing this, this kind of sensitive data on the server. That means in the orchestrator. Now, as I said, I have stored my Twitter credentials on the orchestrator with a name called, with a set name called Twitter cred. Now, let me ask my robot to go to the orchestrator and get this sensitive data, which is my username and the password. To do that, I have some activity called get credential. What does it do? My robot goes to the orchestrator and it takes that credential name what I have specified and it will publishize in this flow. Okay, just a minute. property section and it is asking for asset name. What is the name I have given over there? I am giving Twitter underscore credit. Now it is asking for two um, values where I have to save output. It has to store the password in a variable called password and my username in a variable called. I am just using a shortcut key for creating variable username. Now my username variable is having my username and the password is having the password. Now it has to type in my username, right? I'm just feeding that one. What is that username? Yes, I did. Now next it has to type in my password, which is of a sensitive one. Similarly, I have typing, but you have another activity called secure text. Let me drag and drop over here and indicate on the screen. It has to enter over here. See, it has identified that element. Where it has to type in? It has to type in what is the input? Password. Because the password variable is having the password thing. Next, once I enter my credentials, let me enter it again. I have to hit login button, right? Let me ask the same for my robot. It has to click on login button. Okay, let me indicate it again. Login button. Now it has indicated that element as well. 
I will hit login. After loading the page, what my robot has to do? It has to click on this profile icon, right? Let me bring the same element over here. It has to click on the profile. Once it is clicked, it has to get these two values. Similarly, we have get text activity. What does it do? It tries to get the data from the web browser. See, this is the complete data what I want. Let me store this in a variable called followings. And similarly, I have to get the followers data as well. I'm just showcasing that one. Let me be quick on that. Let me create a new variable called followers. Once my robot gets to this to this kind of data, then it has to go. It has to click on my this thing. You can see another tab. It has to click and it has to click on log out. Let me do the same thing. Let me have click. multiple clicks it has to click on this once it clicks on that one then it has to click on the log, log out at Kantesh Malish let me indicate it again so it will click on that one after clicking that, what it will happen? See again, it asks whether you have to log out. I have to do the same thing. Let me drag another click activity and let me indicate the same thing. Log out. Now, as I log out this thing, what does it do? What does it do? It will log out my account. Now, let me ask my robot to close this application. Close this application. Which application? This complete application. Yes. After closing it, what it should do? If I am performing this task, I would have seen manually that thing, that two values, how many followers and followings. Now, my robot has to communicate with me daily morning, right? In that case, what should I do? We have different kinds of integration activity, as I said earlier. You can send an email. In the, in the form of an email, that data to the specified email ID. Let me bring something called send outlook mail message and it asks for the two field to whom it has to send. It has to send to my ID. And what is the subject line? Let me say as Twitter update and what is the body of the text let me say i this is your robot you have twitter update update of the followings and the followers that's your bot so this is the uh, body of the main message what it has to send so this is the, was just sample thing what I have uh, typed over here. Still, I have to do some modification to view it appropriately. I think my flow is ready now. Let me try to hit this run button and let's see how it works. Let me close. So this is my account. And let me try to run this flow.
you can find something called this debug file. Just hover over it and click on this run button. Let's see what it does automatically. So I'm on my desktop. Okay. While I have indicated that um, browser thing, I have to choose accordingly. Like you have to choose Chrome browser rather than IE. Let me do some some small modification over there. Let me stop this and let me change the property of browser type IE to Chrome. And let me run this flow again. My robot gonna open my Chrome browser. See? I think it has stuck with some issue. Let me check. I think it's asking for your path extinction is not working. Let me just stop this. And let me look into it. Let me close this and let me try to run this again. See, my browser has opened automatically and it clicked on login. It is typing my credential, which is in the orchestrator. My robot took it automatically from there. Now it has to go to my profile and it has to get that following and the followers and it has to log out. It was a simple task. Now it has been ended as well. When I look into my account, I should see that email which should be present. Let me open my Gmail account. See? I have the message. Kantish. This is your robot. You have a Twitter update of 13 followings and 11 followers regards your report. Like uh, the sentence formation and also the it has to append in a new line. I have to customize it bit. It's okay for now. Uh, this is this is what I just wanted to showcase you how this RPA gonna perform. So this is what the capabilities what we can expect out of this RPA, which is of UI path. So you you just now saw how the simple the process was. So this is what the market is expecting, and also this is what people are understanding more of it. Still, they are doing many AI and ML integration to it to leverage, to provide a knowledge capability to your robots. Okay, this is what all about from my end. Other than that, if you want the complete end-to-end -end training on this platform, I can provide you that one as well. We provide complete end-to-end -end training on this platform because the market is looking for this RPA technology. Why? Because because of this COVID, many people have notice the importance of RPA. Due to this, many of the business processes were not working at all. If they would have implemented this RPA, then the operation would be performed easily. In that case, people are moving towards this RPA thing. If you are interested on this complete end-to-end -end training, like uh, with, an, uh, with an advanced certification, what we provide, uh, we will get in touch with you shortly. You can just have a word with our colleagues and uh, you can register yourself for this training. So we do provide this complete end-to-end -end training as well. If you're interested, you can get, uh, you can register yourself for this session. We'll be providing that link as well. Yes, this is all about from my end. I think in the chat, you can see that uh, session has been, the complete details of the session has been posted. Or else, no problem, our team will be getting in touch with you shortly. Since we are having this session in the 
next or next week that is of between 19 or oh, sorry 20 and the 21st between two the two days we'll be performing that training stuffs if you want to see more of this kind of automation stuffs you can register yourself and embrace yourself for this learning this technology thank you guys